Welcome. We're here to talk about Open Edge database monitoring. You need more than a VST browser. So in this session, we're going to talk about some of the thinking behind creating an Open Edge monitoring tool and why you cannot simply point a generic tool to the Open Edge VSTs with some simple SQL queries. We're going to show you how we've incorporated these techniques into ProTop and how you can take advantage of some of the lessons we've learned along the way and hopefully benefit from that. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tom Bascom. I've been a progress user and a roaming DBA since 1987. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I'm a curmudgeon here at uh, White Star Software, where we provide expert consulting services related to all aspects of progress in Open Edge. Another very common issue uh, that we run into, and this is another robustness sort of an issue, is poor transaction scope. Now, you can all probably relate to this, that uh, poor transaction scope only ever happens in other people's code. I mean, I've, I don't write code that has poor transaction scope, and I'm sure you guys don't either, but you do seem to run into it every now and again. So basically, if you consistently have transactions that last more than a few seconds, you probably have a problem. There's three main categories of poor transaction scoping problems. You have transactions that span over user interface. That is, they run for a long time. So a user is doing things, maybe not doing much. They might have just gone to lunch, uh, but there's a transaction active while they're sitting on that screen. Then there are business transactions that have been inappropriately implemented as a database transaction. So this is what happens when you have some uh, process that maybe it does a big purge or something like that, that somebody decided that uh, it should be done as a single database transaction. It doesn't need to be a database transaction. It's very restartable. But if you do it as a big database transaction, then you're going to need an enormous lock table, the dash L. You run the risk of that lock table running out and the session crashing and having all your work undone, which is not really a whole lot of fun. Or you have these ad hoc data fix routines that people like to run. And if you're not careful, it's really, really easy to launch one of those with poor transaction scope and blow up your BI file, which is especially annoying if it happens at uh, five o'clock in the morning on a Sunday when nobody was really expecting to have their BI file blow up on them. Uh, this whole topic of transaction scope is, is really a presentation unto itself. So we're not gonna get really into the gory details of the code around that, but rather how we detect it and what we do about it. So if you do have long transactions, the problem with them is that they drive out of control BI growth. So the BI file can become really, really big. And if it grows, grows big, obviously it's using a lot of disk space and it could crash your database. If you run out of disk space for the BI file, your database is gonna crash. And if that happens, it's difficult to recover because before you can go through crash recovery, you have to allocate additional disk space so crash recovery can recover. So crash recovery needs to be able to recover from crash recovery crashing. So you end up needing to have two or three times as much disk space as the size of the BI file in order to go through crash recovery. Uh, and if you've blown up the BI file to some really big number, that's a lot of disk space. Another problem with long transactions is that you have a very poor user experience when they run one of these and a large amount of data gets rolled back either because they didn't realize that the user interface had a transaction active or because you ran out of some resource like the lock table and it crashed. And they're generally caused, these problems are generally caused by poor coding practices, other people's coding practices clearly, but poor coding with regards to buffer and transaction scope. So how do you monitor for that? Well, there is a VST called under our trans, and you can do a quick little query on it. Do a for each trans where transaction state doesn't equal unknown by duration, which is really handy. Duration is a, the number of seconds since the transaction was started. And you quickly get a list of what your oldest transactions are. Well, that's actually kind of useful, but it's not quite complete. There's still, still a few things missing from that. Like uh, one of the things you can't see here is how much before image space is being used. We can kind of guess since this 
particular example is only three seconds old, that there's not much being used, but in more complex situations, it's much less clear. The other thing that you can't tell from this is whether or not the user is actively working or are they just sitting there twiddling their thumbs or maybe they've gone home for the day, gone out to lunch, uh, whatever. Is the user blocked? So are they waiting for a resource like a record lock? So a user could be stuck because they can't move forward even though they're in a transaction, which would be a fairly bad experience for them to have. And the other thing that you can't see here is what code is the user running that's causing the problem? It would be really helpful if you're trying to debug it to know where the problem is so that you can get in there and solve it rather than just say, oh gosh, there's a problem, figure it out, call the user who probably isn't sitting at their desk. So there's a summary for your notes. So in ProTop, uh, we have a couple of screens that help you to monitor bad transaction scope. The ProTop dashboard, which is at the top of the screen when you start up ProTop, has a section circled over here, which will show a long transaction in red immediately. So we see in this example that we have a 18 minute and 41 second old transaction. It's using 17 BI clusters and about a gigabyte of BI space. So that is kind of problematic. That's, that's more than a well-written application uh, should have. And then you can drill into the details with the transaction detail screen, which is very similar to the query on underbar trans that we had a little while ago, except it has uh, some additional data. You see, once again, there are some columns in purple. So we've added the process ID. Uh, we've added a bunch of flags so you know what type of a process it is. These are all shared memory 4GL clients uh, with an active transaction. Uh, we know what device it's on. And these bits of information are really useful if you need to go out and disconnect that user or do something at the operating system level. And then over on the right, we have a column for the idle time. So we're able to determine how long it has been since that user had any other database activity. And we see on our, on our first user here, user uh, 620, that the transaction duration is 1841 and they've been idle for 1832. So they've just been sitting there not doing anything in terms of touching the database for that time. Uh, we also see they're not waiting for anything and that the code they're running is line 8019 of ap slash suppp whatever that is. Uh, but you can, you can go and you can look at that code and figure out, well, why is there an active transaction here? Is there user interface going on and how can I fix that? So you see that users 620, 848 and 448 are basically transactions that are spanning UI and have been idle for uh, most of the time that that transaction is there. So somebody went into a screen, they did something, they're still on that screen, they haven't left it yet. The transaction scope is, is uh, including their waiting. User 512 is almost like that, except they have done something more recently. So you know they did do something at some point, so they may still be doing useful work. User 907 looks a lot like one of those inappropriately large business transactions. So they've had a transaction running for 11 minutes, but they haven't been idle. They're doing some work. Uh, we're not quite sure what that work is. And we can see that they're online 112,000 of so slash order le2.p. Uh, that's going to be a real code review challenge, but I think it uh, sounds to me like a uh, a 100,000 line long program probably needs some code review pretty badly. User 932 has been blocked waiting for a record lock and they've been waiting for that record lock for eight minutes and 24 seconds. So there's clearly a, a record lock contention issue going on here. And we can look at um, line 1549 and see why the stock out table is, is being blocked for this user. So that's some great information. And that's brought to you largely by what's called the client statement cache, which is a feature in the database. It's been around since 10.1c, I think, something like that. It was a little buggy at first, but in modern releases, 11.7 and upward, it's a very good feature that gives you some real awesome insight into what users are doing in your systems. We like it a lot. ProTop can also generate alerts. So if, if you are one of our commercial customers, uh, you would get an alert on this. You'd get an email or an SMS message uh, letting you know that there is an old transaction. In this case, the threshold is set quite a bit higher. 
and it gives you the information about what the user is doing as well as potentially some information from the operating system level so that you can make decisions about whether you want to disconnect that user or find some other uh, resolution to the problem like giving them a call and saying hey back out of that screen please